Hey there, Douglas Costello here, uh, lead designer and CEO of Wormwood, I believe is the title, along with... And Ian Costello, uh, kind of shop manager, head woodworker here at Wormwood. And, and we're going to talk about the Gaia's edition that we've been planning for the Master Vault, the well, Adventures Arsenal Kickstarter. Super exciting. We're going to be doing individually inlaid flowers in each of these Master Vaults, where each flower is going to be a one-of-a-kind, different design. You're going to either, either you'll let us pick our favorite flowers, or you could send us a request. You know, it's something that we do on our own, like in other projects that we've done, and something that we're just sort of interested in doing. You know, you know, we like them, and there's so many great images. You know, there's so much to work with, and, you know, flower images like these mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So we thought it would be a great way to let people have you know, a little bit of their own input into like a, yeah. know, a really top-notch piece into, of work. Into the process, yeah. And they'll all be totally individual um, and they'll all be totally unique. And that's really, really exciting. I look forward to seeing sort of a, uh, a whole array of different flowers when we're done with this. This Gaia's edition is, is just for the Master Vault. Um, if you mm. want the personal tray... You can order a personal tray to go with it. It's a Myrtle Burl personal tray. Or the pencil. Yep. It'll, Same it'll with all the pencil. Match. But if you're interested in just getting a vault, then this will be yeah, it. Yeah, with your own personalized, hand-cut, marquetry, floral image. Yes. Um, then, yeah, that's what this is all about. So, yeah, let's dig right in. Kind of like nowadays, you know, in more modern times, we tend to do more sort of like realistic kind of uh, images in marquetry. Sure. Like floral patterns have been a thing throughout forever, yeah. you know, in furniture decoration. Um, and, you know, there's been periods where they've been very stylized, you know, little like uh, bells and dots and vines. Um, but in this, we're going to be striving for something a little more realistic. And and what you're seeing right now, guys, is that that's our custom wood rack. We have probably around 60 different woods on that rack that Ian was um, looking through, sorting through. Um, you know, making decisions as to sort of which types of woods to take and um, execute the composition that he settled on. Um, yeah, another thing that's actually great about making your own veneer out of just like lumber as opposed yeah. to buying it from a veneer yeah. mill is, um, you know, commercial veneer tends to be fairly homogenous. Sure. You know, like intentionally because you yeah. want everything to yeah. match. You exactly. want it to like, you know, that's very important yeah. sometimes. For something like this, Having a board that like oh, transitions. Safety. I just want to note safety first. Well, yeah. <laughs> having a board that like transitions in color across from like deeper to lighter to sapwood gives you a range. So this is marble wood you're working here right now. Uh, yep. I, I mean, I've seen the finished piece, and oh, maybe. Okay, I think I, I think I know where the marble would win. It probably yeah, some of the highlights and the stems. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you went with marble wood just because of the um, sort of the golden color, the for the tone. Yep, like sort of like the relative tone in the piece, and because marble wood, like as you know, has that like very distinctive graininess, mm. which gives it like some yeah. directionality. Oh, let's talk about this. This is this is a horizontal bandsaw. So this is essentially uh, a tensioned blade that runs between two wheels, and it's really useful to, for um, doing resaws. And what Ian's doing right here is he took he's taking these solid boards. And he's essentially filleting these boards um, like you would, you would fillet a cut of meat or a fish, um, sort of horizontally. <laughs> I suppose we could use that for. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, let's not fillet any meat in this in this video. But um, and so you can see, he just took off one slice of veneer off of that piece. And so okay, what do we have here? We have purple, purple heart. heart. Yeah. What do we got? What's next? Flame oh, box. Elder. Oh, flame box elder. That's interesting. I actually didn't use any of that in this particular uh, piece, but. It's always nice to have some in yeah. hand. Um, and these are shops on veneers. So these are going to be much thicker than a, a commercially, um, like a, ro a rotary sawn veneer. Yeah. Um, oh, and this is, there. there's a piece, there's an example of a piece. That's cute. Remember uh, that? You did that for your um, your daughter? Yeah, for Christmas? Christmas present. Christmas present. Little um, tea table. Yeah. Well, my kids didn't get anything that nice, but <laughs> <laughs> not remind my wife of that fact. Um, oh, and here here's where the, the rubber meets the road as it were, um, this is when you're actually going to start. Yep. So this is the start of the process. So this is what we're doing yeah, walk here. This, this is called the, you know, there's a lot of different techniques of marquetry that have been used. Sure. Uh, this is a, they call it double bevel sawing technique. Yes. 
Yes, I, yeah. I am familiar. But. Okay, well, <laughs> but let's let's fill in everybody else. You no, know, the trick with it is you have two pieces laid one on top of the other. Yep. You cut through them at a particular angle. Yeah, and that's why the the table was angled. The table's tilted. Yeah, yeah exactly. And it's a function of the blade width and the thick the thickness of the material. And then when you take the two pieces, yep. the piece that you cut out from the other, it'll yep. fit seamlessly Boom. into the other. There'll be no gap at yeah. all. As and, you can see right and there. And there you go. So you're going to go essentially one piece at a time. You're going to cut the the lighter colored wood with the, the, the piece that's getting inlaid into it one piece at a time over and over and over again. Yep. Essentially. Yeah. So yeah. Always returning to the canvas. Yes. So the lighter wood is the canvas and essentially, you know, the colored mm. woods are what's going to, the paint almost. Yep. And speaking Ooh, of paint. Sand shading. Yep. Here's there a little bit of uh, sand shading. Which is a technique that we use to add a little bit of depth and a little bit of contrast where it might not either occur naturally in the piece or yep. where a piece is too small to add a piece of like a darker tone. Yeah. You can use this to give some depth and some shading. And and so every time you you you're you're gonna start painting on this canvas again, you're gonna you're you basically have to you have to drill a hole to sort yep. of pierce so that you can get your blade in and then you essentially are going to work out. So, and, and that hole I'm assuming you, you drill is in the waist area. No, no, it'd be right on the seam. Well, so when I'm doing it in, so this white wood right now is, is essentially myrtle. myrtle. No, well, this is just a piece of maple. This is essentially oh. a scrap. I build it in a piece of scrap wood. Oh. Uh, so I'm not really too concerned. You can see at the end of some of these petals, the drill holes there, because that is always uh, material. And then you're going to essentially, um, once the trace image it out. is assembled, I then cut the final image into the final substrate. Right. And you're going to, you're going to essentially trace that out with a knife or a pencil of some sort. Uh, well, no, no, just, uh, well, yeah, I use the carbon transfer. Draw oh, on like any gotcha. other piece. It's just yep. okay. considering the entire gotcha. image the final piece. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, and yeah, and as you can see, since we're still near the beginning of this assembly, <laughs> uh, it does take a while. That's oh, sure. One, it's, it's not actually a drawback, but using this technique, you can only build one at a time. Yeah. You know, it's not, I can't actually stack that up and make five copies or ten copies, which you can with some other techniques. Yes. But this just gives you a different, kind of a more refined result. I've done a lot of experimenting with essentially cutting veneers via laser. Like yep. using our laser cutter and essentially um, assembling veneers that way. And the nice thing about doing, say, laser cut veneer is essentially it's repeatability. It's yep. you put it in, you press go, it cuts the thing, you put it in, press go, it cuts the thing, put it in, press go, it cuts the thing. The, 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 the downside of it is then all the pieces that you've cut are sort of disparate and then right at the end you're going to assemble them all. So it's sort of, you're, you're composing yeah. the image. You're able to see exact, you're getting feedback with every single piece of wood you cut is informing the next piece. You're going to get your grain directions right. You're going you're gonna to turn this piece of wood this way or that way to essentially... Yeah. That is true. There's actually, and sometimes I don't think... You're I, not going to get that control on a laser, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you need to make all your decisions ahead of time Yeah, when you're working with a laser. You can, I don't think I did make you building this one, but using this technique, you can even cut out a little window in the piece you want to replace mm, a little sure. bit smaller yep. and literally hold it you know, over other options. You no, know? And the, so you, you, can can see, you can see the little, uh, the little drill holes, yeah, that, yeah. Um, the access holes. One thing I love about um, doing botanical inlays or um, anything in that vein is, A, there's a lot of source material. There's a lot of yeah. botanical guides. And so I like historical botanical drawings. You know, yeah, before, you had, cool. before you had photography, before you had essentially people, um, you know, able to essentially take a picture of this, you know, this is how it would be done. You'd, you would, you'd realistically render a plant and then publish it in a book. And then that was what they had. They, they, they had no Google image search in the 1800s. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, and actually, I looked through uh, you know, a lot of those sort of um, kind of preparing for this project. And they're really interesting. They're really interesting and really beautiful. And it does give someone like me, who yeah. can't draw his way out of a paper bag, <laughs> like an opportunity to... <laughs> sure. You know, there's so much source material that yeah. you can... Uh, you know, you can use it to, you know, compose your own thing. I mean, really, using different you elements. could do anything like this. Oh, that's very nice. So that's that's myrtle, burl in the back, purple heart petals, uh, uh, lignum yep. vitae Lignum leaves. vitae for the, most of the leaves, a little What's bit of cocobolo. The stem was a little bit of cocobolo and marble wood. Okay. 
Um, and black palm for the the seed head, which was fun. Oh, black palm! It's the worst wood in the world. Um, the woodworkers so, know what I'm saying. Um, so yep. now you're going to be using a veneer press, uh, and this is how you're going to be. Yep, it's actually coming out. I glued it up oh, overnight. Wow, <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's like a cooking show. Yeah, it's, I like, know. it's like, and we already have one prepared. Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> there it is. Oh, there we um, go. And so now you're going to be leveling. So, yep, no, so. once it's attached to your substrate, you're just going to sand it down, you know, and level it like you would anything else. Another advantage to using the thicker sand veneers, mm, you have a little bit absolutely. more leeway when you're absolutely. actually working on it. Yeah. Uh, without being worried about burning through too easily. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and the chamfers. Yeah, and then it's just, you know, finish it like yeah, any, like of, other any, other, any of our other master vaults. But pouring through, like, all the different illustrations, like, there's so many great yeah. botanicals. And probably a lot of different ones that mean different things to a lot of people. So we yes. thought it would be really fun. So people could actually have a request where it's like, oh, you know, you know, this is, this is a flower that means something. Flowers are highly symbolic. You yeah. Know? There's a lot of meaning behind flowers. What flowers mean, the history. People have personal connections to certain flowers. Um, and so there's a lot, you know, just think of like a, lo um, like a black lotus, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, in yeah. magic. I mean, there's, oh, look at that. Yeah, there it is. Lovely. Very lovely. It, I think the myrtle's good too. And the myrtle yeah. will work well as a background for lots of different images, you know, different colors. You know, yeah, it works with the, yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice canvas. And it's got some figure though. It's got some um, bones on that. Yeah. Um, I think the movie's over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this was really, really fun watching this whole process come together. Um, I find it really interesting. Yeah, I think this is a great way to do it. I think a lot of people find it interesting. We get a lot of like comments about it and interest in it. And I think this is something we want to start doing more of, you know, yeah. like with, with other projects. Totally. So, yeah, if you guys uh, really enjoyed this video, you enjoyed sort of a behind the scenes look of how the craftsmanship actually happens, just let us know. Um, like this on Facebook, share it on Facebook, get it out there and... Um, yeah, I hope that people uh, enjoyed watching the process and watching it all come together. Yeah, and just a you know just another shout out to all our backers on Kickstarter. Yes, because it was the fact that we you know went through all our stretch goals so yeah. fast that we had to sort of that was you quick. know scramble a little bit to try to find something that we thought would be interesting and compelling. And so that's really the reason we kind of pulled this together. Yeah, you know? Kickstarter has been completely instrumental in sort of the entire in, in Wormwood's existence. And so I want to personally yeah. <laughs> thank each and every backer out there. Uh, it means a lot to us. We're not, you know, this is, this is a small company of, of dedicated woodworkers and, and we really ap uh, appreciate your, your patronage. So, yeah. yeah. And that's not just, you know, Doug and I and Ed, it's everyone <laughs> in the shop, everyone on yeah. the floor shares that, uh, that sentiment. So yeah. Thank you for watching and thanks again. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>